All right, so go ahead and state your name and tell me your ride. What are we looking at? Yeah, so I'm Matt Heiss. Um, that's my 1997 Dodge Viper GTS. Dang. All right, Viper. I've always, again, growing up, that's always been a poster car. You know, at the Scholastic Book Fairs, you've always wanted to buy one of those posters <laughs> for like two bucks. Yeah. Now, tell me, um, how did you run into this vehicle? How did you get it? And and uh, what was your experience trying to find one? Yeah, so about a year and a half ago, I uh, really, really wanted one during COVID. Moved across the country from New York to oh, wow. uh, San Diego, was living in Airbnbs. Um, put $2,000 into the stock market and traded it until I got to a hundred grand and then bought it in cash. Oh my God. So those stories, I'm sure you're one of the rare exceptions, but yeah. you reinvest, reinvest and every Hey, day. maybe it pays out, huh? Yeah. Every single day I trade. If it's up 20, uh, or if it was down 20, I'd buy. If it was up five, I'd sell. Okay. So day trading, right? Is that essentially uh, one, one trade a day at minimum. Gotcha. So I wasn't trading like day trading, like a hundred trades a day. It was just one trade a day. COVID was so easy. It was something you just trade something, find a find a company you have somewhat of a belief in that's been completely cut down by twenty percent, and then just buy it and wait for it to pop back up five percent. My God, a uh, new superhero right here, right? <laughs> now, tell me your experience with cars. I mean, growing up, did you have like a changing oil with dad experience, or was it a video game or a movie? How, how did you get into the car community? Yeah, so video games was obviously my go-to. Gran Turismo, Test Drive, obviously Test Drive, Gran Turismo, the car, my blue, white racing stripes. Um, my brother was a mechanic. Um, he was like working at Walmart, it's lube stops, so we'd always work on our cars, so we'd always buy like cheap, like I had a Honda Civic, I had like, he had a Jetta, um, we'd just always work on them, and they were always do crap cars and try to like keep them alive was the goal, but then I, then I got excited and like bought my first like Eclipse, then bought an Evo 8. Okay. And it just kind of just got out of control and, <laughs> and then started falling in love with cars and just owning them. That's cool. That's cool. And so you have a lot of experience with different kind of uh, cars, makes yeah. and models and everything. Would you say you have a preference with a Japanese, German, European? Uh, uh, European? I mean, what, what have you experienced and what have you kind of learned through your journey? Yeah, I think obviously the Evo 8 was, st it's still one of my favorite cars of all time. Um, so JDM, I love a good JDM car. Um, but I have respect for all cars. Like I think having an, uh, I've never been an American car guy, <laughs> except for the fact that I loved the Dodge Viper since oh. I was a little kid. And like, it was the video game car. Um, the crazy story about this car, so I'm from Cleveland originally, and this car was sold in the dealership. And if you remember in Vipers, there was only one per dealership. Oh, and this really? was actually the one um, in my Talmadge neighborhood in, that I drove oh, past as a little kid small world, that, man. that got sold to New York and then got sold to Sacramento. So it literally went to every spot that I've moved to. And so <laughs> it had 18,000 miles and I got to buy it. So um, yeah, pre preference wise, obviously that thing's raw. Like it's no traction control. It's scary as hell to drive, but um, it's fun. Uh, the Evo, you could just drive as fast as you wanted, and you don't have to, no worries at all, <laughs> except for the braking, right? So, um, no, I, no true preference. Just I love, I love coupes, I love all-wheel drive, and I love power. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And 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 you kind of mentioned it. You know, this is a raw, emotional kind of car. V10, no traction control. You, you you're worried about over every puddle you go over, yeah. right? But um, just tell us, like, uh, or, or those that are that are listening, if, if they're interested in looking for a Viper, new or old, because I know there's yeah. still a couple of new ones out there. I don't think yeah. they make it anymore, but yeah, there's a mo there's a modern one out there. Yeah. What, what 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 should they be looking out for? Or what what have you come to learn with when searching for one of these guys? Yeah, so I met a bunch of people actually in San Diego. That have there's like a Viper Club. Um, but if you're buying an older Viper with no traction control, don't drive it like an idiot unless you're a good driver. I am not. I don't consider myself a great driver, <laughs> so I don't drive mine like an idiot. Um, it's the most lethal car on yeah, the planet. Gen great. ones and Gen twos. Um, uh, and I think Gen three technically they added traction control. But I'm not positive. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's scary. Like if you don't have traction control, you have to understand that it doesn't do the things that the modern day car does and you have to know that. And it's my first time learning it. And so me feeling like an idiot going to the mechanic performance shop, driving it when I first got it at 80 and dropping off the gas and then it turns a little bit to the left on the highway and you're like, wait, what's, what's that? And it was torque shift and I had never experienced that in my <laughs> life. And, so, <laughs> and then when you floor it, um, when I was living in LA for a little bit, I floor it to get like through like a left hand turn and I spun it completely in a circle oh by, by accident without even trying yeah, yeah, to yeah. donut. You just 
Yeah. That's the way the car reacted, and and yeah. that's insane. But that's very very good <laughs> advice. I wouldn't buy it to drive it fast unless you're a really really good driver. Um, there's a <laughs> I, reason why there's only like a couple hundred of them left on the road. Yeah, no kidding, right? Because they, they get wrecked, and I mean, yeah, people think that they're uh, they're better. Uh, you know, they think it's a video game, and mm-hmm. that car you can't drive it like a video game. <laughs> Last, they're really good. Yeah, no kidding, right? Last question: uh, California wants to transition to electrification in the next fifteen to twenty years. Seems like you've been kind of around the country. Ohio, New York, to California. Uh, what are your thoughts of electrification and kind of the future of the car culture? I know New York wants to follow California's suit with yeah. getting rid of uh, gas cars. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't know too much about it, to, to be completely honest. I'm always going to own some gas cars, and like, I have no problem with electric cars. Right. There's just a different... There's a different feeling and power that you get from a gas car that I think if you've driven a performance car you never want to give up and so for them to go away i doubt that's going to happen personally but i think that uh it's bound to happen that we're going to move to an electric car situation unfortunately um but i think there's still going to be the car clubs (laughs) absolutely well thank you so much um do do you have uh, uh, any shout outs you want to give to or do you have any uh social media you wanted people to follow you with or just go ahead and get any any plugs that you want to get in now yeah for sure my uh instagram is viper gts 1997 super super easy that was very nice lucky you (laughs) right i didn't think i could get it but that's the only thing (laughs) i appreciate it perfect no thank you so much